Welcome to the overview video for taking your VSTs live with Music OS by Open Labs. My name is Nick O'Toole. I am the Director of Artist Relations for the company. I'm going to give you a very brief, very basic overview of how to start setting up songs inside of Music OS to use live on stage. First thing you want to do is go to your menu and check your options. Under the Audio tab, make sure your ASIO device is set. I'm using the Fireface by RME. This is my sound card. All of your ASIO devices that you have installed should show up here. One thing I want to point out is that you can limit the range of your I.O. settings. The RME has a lot of inputs and outputs. I don't necessarily want to deal with them all. You can have them all there, or you can limit the range. If you only have two, four, six, or eight channels that you're using live to feed to the board, you may want to limit this here. Under the MIDI input tab, this is where you want to select your MIDI input device. I'm using the Yamaha Motif, and I'm using the USB audio driver. I also have set the Automat MIDI for my Novation MK2. On this page, you can also invert your expression pedal, block your expression pedal, and invert your sustain. Listen for MIDI beat clock if you have a master computer sending tempo information, and listen to song start position. Under your MIDI output tab, you can also select whether or not you have MIDI flowing out to external devices in Music OS. This is useful if you have outboard sequencers, samplers, synthesizers, keyboards that you also want to use and you want to have control over via Music OS. Under the Plugins tab, this is where you need to tell Music OS where your plugins live. By default, any Open Labs piece of hardware will have C plugins and C plugins 64 selected already. One word of caution most installers will try to default to a Steinberg VST plugins folder. If you don't catch that during the install process, no worries. You might just want to check to see if you have a Steinberg VST plugins folder and set it here anyway. So now we're ready to begin. To start creating a song, it's very easy. You simply select one of the grids and click on it. Go to your sound browser. This is where you search for VSTs. You can create your own categories and favorites folders. Uh, any VST that you have installed here that v uh, Music OS is uh, looking for will show up. You can filter just to VSTs rather than show everything, including song templates that you've created. And when you click in the search bar, you'll notice that an on-screen QWERTY pops up for use on the touchscreen. I'm going to I'm going to search for Omnisphere by Spectrosonics. You'll notice here that both the 32-bit and the 64-bit version of the plugin show up. I'm going to use the 64-bit version. Now that it's loaded, I'm going to add the sound. I'm immediately taken to my track sequencer. I'm going to click on Synth Editor so I can select the sound I want. I'm going to use Glorious Guitars. Now, this, now the sound is loaded. Now the objective here is I used Glorious Guitars on a song in a, in a studio, and now I want to perform that song live. And I want to take the VST with me live on stage with Music OS because I don't want to have to resample the sound, I don't want to have to re, uh, resynthesize the sound or, select, or, or settle for a sound that's similar to it on a synth. I want to actually play it live with Omnisphere. This is the power of Music OS. Having control over multiple VSTs by multiple manufacturers, making them useful under one platform. I'm going to go back to my Tracks tab, go to my Signal Chains. This is where you see the Omnisphere instance. If you want to add an effect, either MIDI or audio, you can do it here. I'm going to choose the Delay. I'm going to go with the uh, BT Tempo Delay. I'm going to add the effect. I'm going to go to my Effect Editor. I'm going to turn the sync button on so that it listens to the tempo of the host, which is Music OS. I'm going to reset that tempo to 90. You can also tap a tempo. And now you have a delay. What I want to show you next is building a layer. Most often, you're going to be, if you're a keyboard player, you're going to be performing multiple tracks at once because you would have multi-tracked different synth parts for the record, and now you want to perform them. I'm going to add a pad. This is easy to do. 
go to your new track button. It'll take you back to your sound browser. And I'm going to go with an FM8 by Native Instruments. I'm going to turn the monitor button on both tracks on so that I can hear them play simultaneously. I'm going to choose a pad. And now I have a layer. The FM8's a little hot, so I'm going to back that off. Now next, I don't want the pad playing in the upper register where the guitar melody is. I want it down lower. So this is basically like zoning on a, a hardware synthesizer. You want to just open up the track, go to your key split. It'll show you your key range. And either by dragging across the touchscreen or with the mouse, you can limit that range. You can also change the octave in which that range plays without having to adjust your uh, MIDI controller. And now I have the layer that I want. So now I have the patch that I'm going to use to perform this song. I'm going to go back to my set list. I'm going to rename the song by right clicking on it and clicking rename. Song 1. Now, I just did a considerable amount of work. Of course, most layers are going to be a lot more complicated uh, depending on the song and the performance. But I want to save this song. I want to always be able to load this song as it is in any set. So I'm going to go ahead and save the song individually. I'm going to add a little description. I like to date everything. It makes life much easier when you're going back in your programming because things always change and it's always easier to reference the time frame in which something was created. So I'm going to go ahead and date this for Christmas of this year. And I'm going to rename this song my hit song. Okay, so I'm going to create a song number two. Go to my sound browser. I'm going to pick an absinthe by Native Instruments. I'm going to select a patch. So now I have my second song in the set. And basically I want to show you this because it's very easy to transition from one song to the other with Music OS because you're not going to get cut off when you go from song one to song two. That comes in real handy live. Um, okay, so I'm going to delete that for now, and I want to show you why I saved song number one. I'm going to delete it, pretend that I've created a new set, and I want to reclaim that song as it was. I just click on the, on the square, go to my sound browser, I'm going to filter to song templates, and there's my song. It'll always be preserved, and basically you can treat this as a patch. That's how you perform live with Music OS.